Welcome to the fight with Teddy Atlas. I'm Ken Rideout, joined as always by my partner, legendary trainer and Hall of Fame broadcaster, the great Teddy Atlas. Teddy, how are you? Good. How are you, Ken? Good. Got a special episode today. We're going to answer a question from a fan. It's actually a question. It's been a kind of a reoccurring theme. We've noticed a lot, a lot of people have sent in a similar question, but we chose one that we're going to focus on from uh, Stafford. And um, I also like this question because it's relative to me and it's as relates to uh, introducing young kids to boxing. And as some of you may know, I have four kids ages nine to four and um, they love boxing. And at times I actually have to hide the gloves from them because I'll come in and catch them boxing in the garage with no headgear on, no mouthpiece. <laughs> and uh, my wife gets upset with me. But um, so we put out the note on social media. We asked to send, asked people to send in questions. Stafford sent in the following question. I'm going to read to you what he said. And um, I better not see here. any video of your kids dropping their right when they throw their left. I better see them technically solid. I'm telling you, I'm telling you now. I better not see a right hand dropping when they throw a jab. I better not see the chin up in the air like a lantern in a storm. <laughs> it better be tucked down, roll their eyes up, look at the chest area, protect that chin. Real, I, I, I have a. I have at least an expectation of seeing at least that much technique involved in their in their playing around with the gloves. Oh, trust me, Please. they know. They know. They'll ask me all the time, Dad, send this to Teddy and ask him what he thinks. And I was telling these guys earlier, um, my oldest son, while I'm here in New York, my, my wife said to me, I got a funny story for you. My oldest son, Jack, who's eight, has taken to calling my four-year-old Teddy. I have no idea why, and that... I've never heard it before, and she sent me a video this morning saying, here's Jack talking to Cameron, so she made a video. Jack, what's the problem? Tensei's, Tensei keeps interrupting me and Teddy, and we're trying, to, we're trying to build something here. And she's like, who's Teddy? And she's like, no, that's what I call Cameron now. <laughs> Kids are funny, <laughs> that's man. That's cute. So here's the question from Stafford. I'm just going to Tell him to keep his elbows in and oh, keep that knows. left hook short. He knows. All right, go ahead. Please. <laughs> So here's from a question from Stafford. I'm just going to read you exactly what he said. He says, hey, Teddy, I've got a five-year-old that loves boxing, probably because he sees, sees my love for the sport and my excitement talking about it. There's no boxing classes for his age in Vancouver, British Columbia, but I found a fun kid's class for kickboxing I put him into just once a week, but they are great. They're great there. My question, is it too soon to worry about technique too much at this age, or should I just be happy that he's having a good time and always wants to go back? I find there to be a small window explaining things to the little guy. In your opinion, what things would be most beneficial that I really should get through to him early on? Thanks, big fan Stafford. I appreciate the question. Um, appreciate you watching our show. And that's why we're here, to answer your question, because we show our appreciation in, in these kind of ways to, to give back to you guys, to give us the audience you give us. The first thing is, I'm, I, I know they're young and you have to get a kid that's at that, whatever that age turns, everyone's different. Everybody's special in their own way. And because you don't start at young don't mean you're not special. You don't start doing things a certain way that someone else does younger. Uh, that's, just, that's just your curve of getting there. Everybody's special in their own way. But I... The first thing is obviously you want to get a kid that has shown you whether it's eight or seven or nine or ten or six that and you want to be responsible of course but you want to someone who shows you that they can hold their attention even at that young age that you know whether it's just for it's for capsules of moments you know a capsule of 10 minutes okay but that is attentive that can keep that little bit of uh, at a young age uh, of concentration of uh, focus on what you're showing them that they already have a capacity to be coachable and an interest. Again, some kids might show it at an extraordinarily young. Uh, other kid might show it a little younger because their interest hasn't been nurtured to that point, hasn't been developed to that point yet, and it it will be later. And then, again, it's it it doesn't make one better or less. It's just what they are. But you want to get a kid where you know that he's able to have some attention span uh, at at whatever age that is, and an interest. And 
to your first part of the question, no. It's it's never too early to show a blend of technique with a kid, no matter how young he is. It should be taught right. You're going to get it perfect? No. I understand the, the concern is just let them have fun and at least they're doing it. But dude, at least your responsibility, not his, you're the parent, your responsibility is to try to direct it in the right direction. To Yeah, they're going to have fun. Yeah, it's not going to be perfect, but teach them the right way. Still give them that semblance of of proper technique, of of being inside those parameters of doing something with more than just spirit, but also with an understanding of a way to do it. So yes, I don't think it's, or, or no, I don't think it's ever too young to implement technique uh, with a kid when you teach them, whether it's baseball, whether it's, because if you would teach them golf, you would try to get an even swing. If you were teaching them baseball, you would teach them the basics of the uh, try to watch the ball. Don't just look at me. Watch the ball. Follow the ball and keep your swing level. So you kind of answered your own question because it's boxing. You think, oh, maybe it's just free swinging. No. This is our sport here, kid. This is our sport here, father. And with and you're asking the right questions with this sport just like with the other ones i just pointed out uh there's there's a proper way of doing it and yeah they're not going to do it perfect but at least give them the benefit of the right way so the technique should be there uh to the to the level that it can be when you start them and you keep it basic the basic principles of anything in our world, whether it's the world of sports or the world of finance or the world of, you know, of math, the world of uh, of business, the world, there's fundamentals. There's always a fundamental approach. You know, we always talk about building a house, foundation. You, you, you start at the bottom. If the bottom is strong, the top has a chance to grow and to be sturdy. And to last, no different in anything in life, in any approach, probably in any sport, and definitely in boxing. It starts with the feet. So the first thing is the feet should be, if you leave it to a kid, they might be this wide. That's part of the beauty of being a kid. Bring it in a little bit and try to keep it somewhere around the shoulders. So this way that you have a, a great or a proper combination of the ability of being balanced, being sturdy, but at the same time having mobility where if your feet are too wide, you can't move. You're sturdy, but you can't move. You're just a block. You don't want to be a block. You know, play with blocks, but don't be a block. <laughs> so you got your feet somewhere around the shoulders. If you're orthodox, you have the left foot forward. If you're southpaw, if your kid has already shown that he's, you know, dominant hand is the left. Uh, the best way to find out is just give them a ball and let's see which hand they throw it to you with. Yeah, if if again, if he's dominant with the left hand, he's a southpaw. And you're right, that is the best way. Uh, just go in and, or maybe hand them a pen and see, you know, how they start writing um, and start developing this, which is the most important muscle you can develop at any age. So southpaw, dominant hand with the left, right foot forward, right hand forward. Orthodox, left foot forward, left hand uh, forward, and shoulder length as far as the, the foundation, uh, the rudiments there, and teach them the hand placement, keep their hands up, already start teaching them that their chin shouldn't be up in the air, that it should be low a little bit, protect it a little bit. But basic things, kids have fun with it, make it a game. Say, uh, look here. Rather than looking at the guy's face, look here so you can keep the guy from hitting your chin. So you can hide your chin. Play hide and seek with your chin. Okay, I'll play hide and seek with my chin. You know, tuck it away. Make make that chick like some of the cartoons you play with them where, where the turtle goes into the shell. Oh, where'd Mr. Turtle go? Where'd Mr. Chin go? Mr. Chin went here where you can't find Mr. Chin. <laughs> Oh, good. Hide, Mr. Chin. Keep him hidden. I will, Dad. So you get the chin down a little bit, roll the eyes up, look at the chest. Don't get complex. Have fun with it, but do it right. 
And then hands up, of course, elbows in to protect the body. Real simple. Keep the hands up. And just a little below, here's where it sounds complex, but it's simple. Teaching right is simple. You could teach wrong. That's complicated. Because attached to that something wrong comes down the road. Something else wrong. Something bad. Something painful. So teach them simple, but teach them right. Even a simple thing like this, their hands up, a little below your eyes. Why? Why, Ted? Why not here? Well, because up here you block the peripheral vision. Here you still have peripheral vision. You don't have to use that word with them. Just tell them, just a little below your eyes. That's all, son. So you have, or daughter, you have it right here. So you got the hands up and teach them the basics of throwing a punch where one of the fun things and sayings that I would kind of employ is that with offense, you shouldn't have to lose defense, you know. So, you know, you throw, but with without carelessness, you know, with with a, with a just, just kind of like you try to teach them to use their letters or when they paint to stay within the lines. Well, teach them when they throw, stay in the lines. Mm -hmm. Same thing. You know, you paint, you know, oh, stay inside the line there, buddy. You know, uh, the nose isn't over there. It's just here. You know, same thing. The punches should go straight, come back straight. You throw the left, keep this one up. Each one has a job to do. The left has a job to go out. The right has a job to stay up, to protect. The right has a job to go out. The left stays up. So just basic, throwing the punches, rotating your hands, just the basic things when you throw the jab, you rotate it. A little simple thing, the chin is in the shoulder when you throw it. You're not just throwing it like this. Mm -hmm. Just, just again, keep the stay. Let, let Mr. Chin stay in there like Mr. <laughs> Turtle, and stay right in there like Mr. Turtle. So you got the chin, so you're protected when the shoulder automatically protects your chin as you throw. So just basic, and then I would say the most important part of that was, as I said, the leg placement, foundation, balance, proper placement of the legs. And then understanding distance. Just just simple. Just understanding that when you throw the punches, it should be from a certain distance. That you should get understand throw it where you can get the jab full extension on it. So you're not learning you're not just throwing it from too close where later on you're gonna be open to obviously counters. Because a lot of people, a lot of grown up people, they never learn that. They throw the jab from too close, bang. It's amazing when I do broadcast of fights, and I used to do the broadcast regular. Now I do the sports center stuff, where I see a, a professional fighter throwing a jab where he's never was taught how to throw it from the right range, where he's throwing it from too close, where the right hand could be timed instead of from where you can't time it. So just teach him basic position and basic range, no different than you would if you were teaching him baseball. You teach him where to stand in a plate. Don't get too close to the plate. You get hit with the ball. Get at this position. Okay, I got it. You know, put your feet here. Okay, and and stand. So you learn the proper position at the plate. Even if you're teaching a kid basketball, you, you teach them so simple underneath the basket. Get get position so you can block the guy out and you can get the ball. You can get the rebound. Just simple, basic things. And again, with with the range, just understand where the good range is, where the bad range is. You know, the bad range is, is we'll call it, say, don't be in no man's land. <laughs> All right, son? Don't just stand right in front of the guy where, you know, you're too close. Be a little bit out of his range. Oh, where's that, Dad? Well, see where I throw? So you got to be just a little past that. So just understand where the safe range and where the range where you – obviously you have to worry about something coming. So maybe you make it a fun thing. Say, okay, be be at the missing range and be at the punching range. Mm -hmm. If you're going to punch, be at this range. When you want to make a miss, be at this range. So just, just understand position and range. Position of where you should be in that ring as far as, you know, standing, uh, what the distance, what, what the distance, what's, what's relative to distance, the way it can't touch you. You know, That's because good. if you just say distance, kid, it's it's too complex. Well, what's attached to that? Well, just where he can't touch you, son. Oh, over here. Yeah, a little bit over here. Out of, and then here's the range where now I can touch him. So just understand, 
those three basic principles, uh, keeping the hands up properly uh, with the chin down, you know, throwing the punches straight. Uh, while one hand goes out, the other has the responsibility of still being up, that it can't just drop. Just good basic principles with those three areas. The hands up, the punches going out straight, the legs under you in the right position underneath, not too wide, somewhere around the shoulders, and understanding the range that you want to be in, the distance, the position that you want to be standing in when you're in front of a guy. As you're describing that, it reminds me of the episode we did with Deontay Wilder and Donald Brazil, and you talked about Brazil, and we talked about him being a good athlete, playing a college uh, quarterback in college. And um, But one of the things that he was missing due to the lack of his amateur pedigree was the defensive ability. And as you were describing, your natural instinct is to throw punches. It's easy to look throw punches in his in a vacuum but when punches are coming back at you that's where you start to see like the real difference in separation in class is that defense and one of the things that i always you pointed out when my kids were punching one of their uh, punching bags that it was like a spring-loaded thing it keeps bouncing back at them you said remind them to keep slipping the head so now every time i hold the pads for them they say okay dad throw punches back at me so i can work on my defense so that's become like a common theme for us is to me to throw punches at them they have to slip and feel comfortable in the pocket slipping punches versus when people are new to boxing, you'll see a lot of times they'll pull straight back, they'll put their head down. It's very difficult to get comfortable in that pocket with punches winging at you where you're just slipping them slightly and they're just coming past you and you're countering off of them. That may be a little bit more advanced than what he was looking for, but that's some of the things that with my own kids that I try to focus on with them is being comfortable with punches coming back towards them once they get that distance and uh basic technique down well you're smart to do that because listen not only for the obvious reason because you want your kid getting away from the punch from the physical you know part of it not getting hit but you're giving them a mental exercise to control themselves you're mm -hmm. teaching them at a young with fun mm -hmm. with fun without seriousness right you're teaching them to control themselves you know not just to react but to act in a way that will put them at an advantage that makes sense for what they're doing that there's an attachment to what they do as far as you know their success as far as uh giving them uh an advantage you know uh, whether you teach them baseball and the proper way to run the bases and to round the bases so they can they can uh, keep their momentum going the right way or, or to lead the bases not to lean too much where you get caught where the pitcher could catch you off because you're you're leaning too much forward where you bend your knees i mean there's a reason for those things and you there's never too early a time to teach them if you teach them in an applicable way that for a kid at that age it's fun and they again in boxing there's always the opportunity to gain two lessons you gain the physical lesson of getting away from the punch which obviously makes sense from a physical standpoint, but you're giving them a lesson mentally to being disciplined already without having to use that word in a too large a way at such a young age to control yourself. To, yeah, you feel like, yes, son, you feel like, but no, here's, here's, the, here's the trick to it. Here's the game that we're going to play. You have to go straight over and when the punch comes at you. Don't pull away. And again, you're already given a lesson in self-control uh in in making choices and there's very few sports that can make itself can avail itself to such things for a child in that kind of way where they can get those lessons and boxing i i think if we do anything here with this answering these questions i would say that maybe it kind of erases some of the wrong connotations of the sport where kids shouldn't be learning it young but they should because there's so much they can gain from it without getting smashed in the head yeah i feel like there's a big uh, mental component to it right and, and that's part of what i'm trying to address with them is that it's normal to be scared when punches are coming at you and i find that a lot of times instinctually most people if they don't have experience they want to take their eyes down and put their head down it's like a natural instinct and you saw that in the triple g steve rolls fight Steve Rolls put his head down instinctively and Triple G hit him with a corkscrew punch on top of his head and almost knocked him out with it. I mean, he did stop him, but how do you, what are your thoughts on the mental side for a young kid and when to introduce him to sparring and when you do, do you have a talk with them about 
how they're going to cope with the fear of if if they do get caught with a punch because I, I find that that's a big part of it with anyone who's new to boxing is getting comfortable with the fact that it is boxing. You are going to get punched in the face and how do you deal with that mental side of it, especially early on, maybe with some of the fighters that you were coaching up in the cat skills early on, like what were some of the challenges you faced and how did you deal with that part of it? Well, the first thing, and that's the right question, is another residual from boxing teaching at a young age that kids are getting is just a lesson in facing things. You know, we, we all want our kids to learn to face things, but when's the right time to start applying that lesson? You know, well, parents, one of the, the the great pressures of a parent is, when is the time for the birds and bees talk? You know, well, there's things that come way before birds and bees talk, you know, and sometimes we, we forget about those lessons uh, have to be put out there. And that's facing things that, you know, rather than just wait till your kid comes home crying because he met his first bully. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, that's part of life. Uh, that took his lunch or took his candy bar or took his toy, you know, or pulled his hair. And one quick he, thing about that, people want their kid to avoid that. I see them, you know, I've, I've heard people in my own community talking about like, oh, I want to send to this school and that school. There's too many bad elements there. I say, if they never deal with any bad elements as a child, what the hell do you think is going to happen to them in corporate America? Like part of growing up is you don't want them to have negative experiences, but you should want them to face adversity. How the hell else are they going to learn how to deal with a bully if they never face one until they're an adult? And now they're like getting run over by people who have dealt with bullies their whole lives. And one of the great things about what we're talking about that's inherent with this sport not the things, the negatives that people, you know, partner in their head with the sport and and picture in their head with the sport. But one of the great things is, again, in a natural way, it's teaching you to face things. Mm -hmm. Way before that that moment ever comes in your life where, bang, it's in front of you. You're already learning that there's something in front of you. You know what the bully is? The left hand you're throwing at the kid. Mm -hmm. That that's threatening him, yeah, it's threatening him. It's imposing itself on him. Will I allow it to overtake me by crying, by just as you said very well, put my head down, by just covering up and just freezing there? Yeah, probably at first, but then you teach him. No, don't let that happen. By running away from it, no, don't let that happen. Slip it, and if you slip it, you're in control. It goes right past you. It can't hurt you. A lesson to deal in life with things that are coming at you how to avoid those things how to handle those things how to control those things so the sport in itself is a great sport where it will naturally start to teach these things of what you just asked me how do you teach a kid that just by being applicable in a sport by just teaching them the basics of the sport you're gonna do that you're gonna tell them you're gonna tell the kid in the most simplest way, son, daughter, you know, you feel like you feel like pulling away. Guess what? Everyone feels that way. But what we're going to do is you're going to control that and you're going to do this. Or you're going to do this. Or you're going to do this. You're going to block it. But you're not just going to pull away. You're going to feel like it, but we're going to play a game. We're going to play a game. You feel like doing that, but you... The, there's two guys on your shoulder, okay? All right, uh, Mr. Mr. Well, we won't call him Mr. Bad, but we'll call, we'll call him uh, we'll call him Mr. Red. Mr. Red, Mr. Red wants to just go away. He wants to go. You know, he doesn't want to deal with that. But Mr. Green, Mr. Green tells you, no, don't just go away. Stay here and move your head this way. Do this. So learn to tell Mr. Red, be quiet right now <laughs> and listen to Mr. Green. All right, Dad, I'm going to listen to Mr. Green. I'm gonna, when, when, that, when you're throwing that punch at me, Mr. Red, because Mr. Red has been telling me, Dad, that to, to, to go into Run. the next room, <laughs> to, <laughs> to, go, and to go into Tommy's room. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to. I'm going to listen to Mr. Green, Dad. Mr. Green's going to make me go this way. And, and that's how you impart 
these wisdoms, these these tools of life that we all need. And you can use this great sport to do that. So you start to teach them that, hey, you know, it's okay to feel like Mr. Red because a lot of people feel like Mr. Red. It's not wrong, but it's better to act like Mr. Green. And you can act like Mr. Green. And so you, the sport allows you, the gives you what you need, the landscape that you need to teach such things, such important things for a kid that's going to go out into his own fight <laughs> in life. So uh, I think it's, uh, I'm glad that we, we got this question. I hope I answered it uh, fully uh, to where the 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 person asking it and the other people that haven't had a chance to ask it but might be thinking the same thing with their children uh that it satisfies them yeah no that's a good point and like i said i think a lot of times people they especially of late they want to coddle the kids and i always tell my wife when she's like oh i don't want them to i'm not comfortable with them boxing so much and i say it's much better to be a uh warrior in a garden than a gardener stuck in a war so you need, I, I like ha them having the confidence and ability to put some punches together, defend themselves, not to go out and get in fights. I hope they never have to get in a fight. But if they do, I want them to be confident enough that they can defend themselves. And that's kind of like the motivation behind it introduced them. Because like with any sport, if the kid's not passionate, there's no sense. You can't have them do things that you're into. They have to want to do it themselves. So I try to introduce them to a little bit of everything and... uh you know, I hope that they like the things I'm passionate about, but I'll be perfectly happy if they choose to play uh, guitar instead of baseball, whatever it may be. Um, but anyway. No knitting. No. Well, my daughter loves to knit. No, no, that's beautiful. <laughs> knitting, I, and maybe she can make me some socks. <laughs> well, I, I need I need warm socks. Uh, she, she, I'm sure she'll be on it as soon as she hears this one. She and loves patience listening. out there. Patience, patience. Uh, I mean, that's that's your job. Your job is to have patience and have yeah. understanding. And to use the analogy of the gardener, you know, don't just go looking to kill weeds. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> pull them out. Pull them out properly because if you just pull them out too fast, you disrupt the the flowers. You disrupt the rest of the garden that you don't want it disrupt. That's right. Well, thank you to Stafford for sending the question. Really appreciate it. And Teddy, thanks for the time. Appreciate you as always. Thanks for being with us. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Bye.